Pledge allegiance to the flag, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, first item under number three, old business, is to review, discuss, and act appointment of animal inspector. Uh, it's that time of the year. We don't appoint. We just nominate. And the state will make the appointment. Uh, for the last probably 15 years, our animal inspector has been Stacy Ferry. She's not here. And... You know, she's uh, done it for that long. I don't know of any other people that may be interested. Uh, if somebody has a nomination, then I will accept a nomination of Stacy Ferry from someone. Is there a nomination? Make the nomination uh, for Stacy Ferry for Animal Inspector. Second. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to nominate Stacy Ferry as animal inspector for the town of Dighton. Uh, is there any further discussion? Just one thing. That's the only reason I hesitated. She had no, she, she wants to do it, right? She has no issue. As far as I know, yeah. I mean, there hasn't been much activity over the last year due to COVID because they had uh, the state had stopped the inspections out there yes uh, we did invite her to tonight's meeting so <clears throat> yeah, I mean, she, she, for years, I, I'm, I'm fine I'm happy with her, so. yeah mr. chairman this is only a nomination through the end of this year anyway fiscal yeah. year correct fiscal year 22 this is through fiscal year 22 oh okay so this I got you oh we have I would vote yes, and then if she always says she had an issue with it, she can always come back. Well, yeah, I mean. She still, to, she still has to accept and send the papers into the she state. She has so. to accept it and get it notarized if she wants to do it. If she declines, then we'll just revisit it. Next yeah, we'll go from there. So at this point, the nomination is for Stacey Ferry. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That, that carries. Uh, nomination of Stacey Ferry for the record. Uh, 3B, to review, discuss, and act, and reinstate all Board of Health inspections. Uh, I'm sure our health agent is going to address this, but since the restrictions uh, on COVID has probably nearly gone totally away, uh, we will begin doing food inspections and the other inspections as necessary. Uh, that are required either annually or, or every six months. So, uh, did you want to add anything, Todd? I just want to say I'm looking forward to being a health agent again um, instead so of just we. being a COVID agent. So are we. So, um, it's, it's been a long year, but yeah, I think it's time to start getting back out there and okay. checking on places. But obviously, I just want to make sure, I mean, we haven't heard from the state yet, but assuming that June 15th is when the state of emergency ends, that come June 16th, it's fair game, so. Okay, so it's effective uh, uh, June 16th that we can start inspecting. So uh, just for a quick discussion, um, at last Selectman's meeting, we appointed an assistant finally to help me uh, with some of these routine inspections. So I don't know if the Board of Health is interested in teaming up with my department and doing a joint inspection with the new assistant because a lot of the establishments that Mr. Pilling needs to go to are the same ones that I haven't been to either for over a year. So is that something you want to consider? Then, you know, we can have Nancy set up appointments and we can get them all caught up. Yeah, it doesn't bother me if, whether we go in with one person, two people, three people, it doesn't matter. Because yeah, there are inspections that entail the fire chief, yourself, Board of Health, so. Yeah, the fire department really is involved in the end of year liquor license inspections, but these particular inspections that I know Agent Pilling hasn't been doing are the same ones that I haven't been doing, so it might, it might be good for us to go to these establishments mm -hmm. together. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem. That would probably work out very well, actually. 
Yeah, for us and for the uh, property. Yeah, so the same food restaurants or the restaurants he goes into, you go into yeah, as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're checking for your stuff. So, uh, right. Yeah. So, he would too. When I would finish the inspection, you're like, oh, Jim was just here. Yeah. Right. yeah. With all that being said, is there a motion to reinstate all Board of Health inspections effective June 6, 16? So moved. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, myself. Uh, motion carries. Um, we're moving on to 3C to review, discuss, and act employment of an on call as needed transfer station attendant. We did reach out and try to fill this position. We didn't get any uh, responses. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing uh, posting uh, going forward. We were hopeful that we could get somebody before Mr. Ryan's current transfer and station attendant went out for. Uh, surgery on June 10th, but it didn't work out as we had hoped, but we will continue to try to do this. So right now, the uh, just for anybody that's watching, I'll explain what this is exactly. Transfer station is open on Tuesdays from 9 to 11 and, and Saturdays from 8 to 3. Uh, in the case of an absence, the hours are filled by another department, which costs the town uh, overtime, time and a half, probably about the tune of 35 to $40 an hour. So we are hopeful that we can get some, and I mean, there's no guarantee of hours, but the current rate of pay is uh, 16.79, I believe. Uh, so on a Saturday, if the current attendant should happen to fall out for some reason or want to go on vacation, there would be uh, an opportunity for uh, uh, seven hours of pay on that date at, at that amount. So this will be an ongoing request, like I said. And uh, if I didn't work for the town, I'd probably do it. But <laughs> Anyway, uh, just follow our website and you'll see what's required of the position and send us a email or a letter of interest and we'll go from there. So 3D is review, discuss, and act COVID-19 updates. Where are we at? I just want to say for 3C that Mr. Rines has done an excellent job up there. We've had um, Absolutely. All, only good stuff from him. He's been very on top of everything and ahead of the game. It's been good for office staff to have somebody competent up there doing their thing. Not that the guy before him wasn't, but I'm just saying that he's done a great job. So. Yeah, he has. Like I said in the last meeting, too, a couple times I've been up there, he's been very attentive and right on top. Very, very happy how things are going up there. So, it's not a hard job if anybody's interested in something like that. So. No, nope, but continuing on that note, so obviously we're going to be using DPW staff. Um, obviously, we don't have a lot of money in the budget for that, so we're going to have to be kind of keeping an eye on that and, and seeing where we go. And when I get into inspector's report, we'll, we'll talk more about that because we've got trash numbers to, to go over to. But we'll come back to that later. So COVID-19 updates, as everybody knows, May 29th, uh, effectively COVID is over. Masks aren't, don't need to be worn uh, unless the place you're going into is asking for them. Or if you're a student at a school and there's some exceptions to that, like if you're at prime time or something along those lines. But we went around to all the local restaurants and retailers in town to let them know and they were all very happy to know that um, because it's been difficult for enforcing because a lot of people that don't want to wear masks and do want to wear masks and it can be difficult so but it's kind of behind us now the number of cases is going way down we're getting like one case a week so it's been much 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 more manageable however we're really really far behind and like all the paperwork for covid and other stuff and and we're trying to create a database for the homebound people and that kind of thing so we still got a lot of covid catch-up work to do like debriefing if you will but um otherwise it's it's all good Okay. Want to add anything? Either one of you? I believe the state is looking or just did change. Uh, there will be no more close contacts of exposed outdoors. That came out yesterday or today. Yeah. So, yep. um, 
only be, there will only be close contacts considered if you're in an indoor environment. That's a pretty big. It is pretty big. Okay, we're going to move on to new business. If there's nothing, no more comments on that. Uh, 4A, review, discuss, and act on body art studio inquiry. We have a gentleman with us tonight who's interested in opening a uh, body art studio uh, within the town. I understand he's also a town resident. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before you get started, I'd like to temporarily leave the meeting. Um, I own a building in town that could potentially lease to establishment like this, so I don't want to be part of the discussion. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the record, uh, Mr. Aguiar is recusing himself for this uh, discussion. Okay, why don't we uh, we'll start with your name and your address here? And uh, hold on, do we need him closer to a microphone, Dave? Yeah, probably would help. Can you sit over by Jim's? It's up to you. You yeah. want to go with that? Yeah. We've got a camera all set. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Jeff Ryan. I live in Dighton, Mass. And I'm here to inquire about the town adopting the Chapter 111 policy for the, the model from the state. Um, currently, there's no application process in Dighton. Um, I'm a current owner of a shop in Easton for the last 13 years. Um, I decided to sell the business, not uh, sell the building and not my business. I'm um, looking to move, kind of downsize a little bit. I'm looking to move from four artists down to maybe two. Um, and I'd like to try to open up in Dighton. When I was in Easton, they didn't have a policy either back then. So I worked closely with the Board of Health to try to develop certain things and procedures outside of the model because um, the Board of Health can change the procedures in such a way that the town would like. I do have a building in mind, um, a location which I checked with the zoning board, uh, 1901 uh, County Street, Unit 1. Um, so I'm looking to start the process, hopefully, if I'm able to, uh, in this town, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Um, we, we did have... Years ago, well, let me start, let me back up a pinch here. Years ago, the Board of Health was uh, also the Board of Selectmen. And we did have some regulations that were presented uh, by Mr. Bernardo. And we went through the process of attempting to adopt them. Uh, the problem was the Board of Selectmen at the time was also the Board of Health. And there were some recommendations to remove certain parts of the regulation that had an impact on what we would have liked to have done uh, or, or seen <coughs> done. So we're back at square one. We are not, I don't know if anybody is, but. Uh, well, my recon uh, I would recommend if, uh, if I'm at the point where th there is a policy that uh, my business in Easton, we were totally disposable, which means we throw everything away. There's no autoclave. Um, so we don't get involved with the autoclave process. Everything gets disposed. And uh, we were able to do minors in Easton uh, from 16 to 18 with parental consent. Um, that, again, is up to the Board of Health. They can take the regulations and they can do them as they want uh, as far as changing. Um, I plan on opening, if I do open here, if I'm able to open here, only until 8 o'clock at night and there'll be two days off. Um, I don't want to open late. Um, from 10 o'clock to 8 would be fine if I can just establish that hours here. Um, I, the, during the 14 years that I've been in business in Easton, I've never had one complaint. I worked close with the Board of Health. Um, we have a good reputation. We have over 7,000 clients. And none of them want me to retire. Okay. Um well, I'm, I'm pleased that you, you want to start the process and get something going in Dighton. Uh, we certainly can use uh, different types of establishments, including what, you know, your type of establishment. Um, we kinda... are, as far as I'm concerned, willing to start the process and move forward. Uh, 
I don't think you're opposed to. No, but if I could, I back in 2017, Ross, I think it's uh, 2017. 16. Uh, it 16. 16. 16. Or 15. So let me just go back so everybody knows what happened with the uh, tattoo uh, regulations or body art, I should say, body art practitioner, uh, and I believe it's still in place. Um, so at that time, we had uh, adopted regulations where you could add a non-criminal disposition. So we adopted, we had, first we adopted a local one, talking about land use and how people are supposed to keep their properties clean. We changed some verbiage there. Uh, and then we added a non-criminal disposition for anyone. So when we went out for a food inspection, it was food, tanning, uh, swimming pool, and I um, can't remember the other one. If you could just, but it, was, it was those four. If you went out to do an inspection, you would have the ability to give out a ticket, a non criminal disposition. And then, when, at the same time, I used, I was working in Lakeville at the time, I used Lakeville's, and it's on, the, it's on there, Lakeville's regulations, which I believe they got it from Randolph. So if you go on the, if you go on the website of Randolph and Lakeville, they're identical. Mm -hmm. And we actually adopted that one. Well, so it yep. says. It, it didn't end up going through like that. It, the selectman pulled out part C, and part C was tanning, swimming, body art. They removed that section of the regs before it went forward. They removed the word regulations, not, not bylaw, from my understanding. No, it was the whole yeah, section. Some more research on And that. then it got rejected too, didn't it? Yeah. And then the attorney general rejected it. Yeah, so it never would have to go to town meeting vote and make these approval we, we, regulations. We a regulation. PR regulation yeah. here. That no, was my understanding. So we, yeah. we posted it and the same thing. We had the hearing. We um, did the two readings of the um, regulations, but I'm not sure what actually. We can't seem to find that it ever actually finished. I guess we're going to have to look. We went through that the whole process. I think, you know, and if, I, I don't, I'm not sure how soon you're looking at to get open, and, um, but I, I, I think at this point, we really don't have any body art establishment or practitioner regulations in place. We really should have, and things happened, and things got yeah. lost and mixed up, and they ended up going away. So, again, I'm not sure how quick you're looking to get open. Um, well, unfortunately, regulation, you have to... Discuss an open meeting that has to be on the agenda. So, like, we could do that next, you know, at our next meeting, and then we'd have to set a hearing date. And that point, you know, then as long as there was no objection, it would get approved, and then there would be an effective date, things like that. It. So, but I understand what the one you're talking about. There's a model regulation. There is on, a on, um, there's a general model yeah. Re yeah, regulation yeah. from the state. And you just yeah. plug in the well, you plug and in. And I know that when working with Easton, we wanted certain things to happen in that regulation. So. Um, we, we set those in there, and we've never had a problem with them. But that would have to be, we would have to discuss those, those limitations, the age, um, if there was autoclave, and I'm, not, I'm in favor as well as a disposal. Yeah. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know anybody that uses an autoclave anymore. Well, yeah. they, there's a lot that do the autoclave, and if you don't obviously keep up with the score tests and everything else, and it's just redone, you just, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> You know, if you're not cleaning them, and, but you know, it's cheaper to get a disposal and throw everything away because they're all sanitized. The machine itself is expensive. The testing on it's expensive. The operation. Yeah. It's not much as the machine is how you cover it and how you cover the clip, board, uh, clip cord that holds it. And nothing rubs against it, the uh, client. And, you know, the inks are done properly. That They have an expiration date on the inks um, and the sheets on them, all the, you know, what, what they're, what's in them. There's no more metal than those at all. Mostly I'm a vegan right now, so, which is good. It's come a long way. It's become a hobby, and now it's a business. So, I think we can probably get through this two to three months. Yeah, I'd say like by by early early August. I personally would prefer quicker, but if if that's well, not possible, it's not possible. I think, I, I think possible. what we could do is I'll put on our next agenda. Regardless of this, should be on our next agenda anyways. Because we can look at where we left off on this one, and we can actually open up the model one, yeah. and. Uh, Decide on because we're going to need it regardless. This, if this doesn't, if, if this something happened, I, I don't know how we just left it. If it didn't happen, why did we just leave it to the side? But I mean, really, potentially at this point, I mean, he could open 
apply open and then whatever regulations we current, I, you would I, just have to come into compliance. I do have, right? my, my license is current right now, but it's in the town of Easton. Um, I do have, I did all the aftercare, the consent forms and everything else for the town of Easton. And we combined that with the model and uh, they came to a conclusion that, you know, we could do minors at the time. Um, but I chose not to do minors where you can see the tattoos with a short sleeve shirt on. That was my policy. I don't do face tattoos. We don't do face tattoos or, or even minors on fingers or hands. Uh, um, I could just tell you straight up, I'm not, I'm not in favor of minors. Anymore. That's fine. It's, it's less work for me. Yeah. <laughs> it less really is. Personally, because at that, at that time, the parents could cave in and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. just a, yeah, I'm, I'm full of tattoos, but no, for a child to get a tattoo, um, a minor, absolutely not. Yeah, and that's not a problem at all. I mean, that's you sent us a Lakeville one, right? I believe we, ad we adopted the Lakeville. Yeah, so if you want to look at the Lakeville site, on, we're probably so going to adopt the same thing. That's the, model, the state model. Okay. And I, I was reading the Lakeville one today, which, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward, and I, I think if you read that, you'll probably get an idea of what our, our reg is going to be. Um, I'm open to anything as far as expediting this. It's, uh, oh, I think Matt's idea is pretty good. I, I mean, if there's no regulation in place, there's nothing for us to stop something from happening, right? So you can go in, do whatever you got to do. You know, I, I don't, do we even have, we don't have a permit at this point right now? If there was a fee on there. I don't think we have an application if that's what you're asking so for. Basically, just bid fee, if you will. I guess, I guess and then, you know, at some point between now and when we get it passed, you know, if, if there's any differences, then you would just have to come with the compliance. But at least that way you can get your ball rolling. I guess, thank you. I guess the, the biggest thing is we'd want to get the ball rolling, and I have an address. Um, so for me to do whatever build out I have to do. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, I have the certain things that the Board of Health requires in stations, so many feet. Yeah, there's um, got to be this. I'm sorry if I draw, but there's got to be uh, foot pedals. There's got to be certain sinks in the room. Well, the, right you now, kind of yeah, the sinks. Up, and then go backwards and say, oh, I have to move all this plumbing. Can I ask for a variance? There's certain things that yeah, are required. Yeah, we need, to, we need, you need a slop sink. You need station. Yeah. But you can use uh, uh, mobile yeah. sinks now they make that have the hot water to a certain degree that you need for hand washing stations. So you don't have to dig up the ground and yeah, do all the You want you walking way over there to go wash your hand or um, touching the sink where you can have a foot pedal. Th that, that's also um, one of the things that you can do in the, in the shop is also. Um, it's it's it, all spelled the, out in the regs. That, that's it's what. more, it's really more to do with the Board of Health than, and then it would be the building inspector or the zoning because the Board of Health does regulate this. It, this just helps the agent do his job. So when he goes in there, he doesn't have a, like a checklist. He can say, oh yeah, that's right. Let me see your sink. Let me see your signage. Let me see this. Let me check your injury reports. Do you have any injuries? You start going through all those questions. Exactly. Things that you would forget. He's just going to go in there and say, oh, it's clean and this and that. Because there's no red. So I think. Well, I think it would be safe if you follow the Lakeville ones that we adopted already. And I'm sure it's it's still going to be. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. If you follow the Lakeville ones that we thought I'm we adopted. I'm not sure about the Lakeville. I'm familiar with um, Easton, um, Dayton, not, I mean, uh, Rainham, um, and out that way. I know some rules and regulations changed. Like, I know Taunton changed because they had a problem with one of their studios, like, four, three or four times. So they changed from uh, taking the... Um, the skin course from the department of, uh, in Quincy, the Department of Health, which is a requirement. Um, they changed from having that to having a semester on uh, anatomy at a college level, which I don't. Yeah, they did that so because the because yeah, they did that because of the piercing. They were actually surgically uh, putting stuff in people's skin. I did one one of the towns you just mentioned is where I work full time. So we have the, our body art regs and. I actually changed ours um, there a couple years ago because, so we, we still require an A&P class for the piercing for that reason, but for tattooing, an A&P class, there's a couple pages on skin layers and that's it, right? Exactly. That skincare class, so uh, Ruth, she no longer teaches it there. Actually, I think she retired, but when she opted to no longer teach it, she said any health department that has a public health nurse or a health agent that has some kind of medical background, 
I'll give you my class. All the documents are free, you can kind of tailor it to your needs, which I did. I now require that. If you don't have a full AMP class, for all tattoo artists, you have to have that and the microblading. Um, that's and, you know, that's basically a Basically, you wind up sitting down with me for a couple hours, and we, I mean, you get into it is some more really invasive crazy stuff than with the, the skin, skin diseases, yes. which to me is a lot more effective. So, you know, I mean, there's things like that. that we will not be doing piercing. I will not be doing piercing. So. So, I mean, a lot of this is discussion for the actual regs when we get to that point. I think that what we're trying to get out of this now is that he's okay moving forward, and obviously if the regs, we adjust something as we go. But presumably the earliest we could do this would be at an next Board of Health meeting to start the discussion. We can get it posted and have draft regulations or whatever to discuss draft regulations at the next meeting. Right. So, my, because we don't have regulations, there's nothing to say you can't do something now, right? I would just suggest if you do proceed, you know, if, if they're looking to model after Lakeville, something like that, and take those regs, that way, if something gets passed, you're not caught off guard or surprised, and all of a sudden now you have to do crazy changes, you know. Um, that'd be my only suggestion, you know, and certainly. I think my only. As, as my, we have our hearing. My only thing would stop me would be the anatomy course. I mean, I went to college for art, uh, and I've been doing this 14 years, and I took the skin courses and everything else, so uh, if, hopefully, if that's not in the, Lake for, I won't be able to, you know. That's that's why I wouldn't you yeah. know, work. By him. And I'm, I'm a big proponent mm -hmm. of, of that skincare class just because I know yes. what it includes. But I know most of it regarding oh. the piercing and microblading, so you know, because right. you do break the skin, you know. So know. We're, there's seven, there's seven, know. There's seven yeah. layers of germs. Yeah, and and we let that one go too, exactly. and all of a sudden you have a, it's even though they're going to hold a liability, they're, they're going to come and talk to us and say, you know, there was a serious infection and whatever it was. I've actually had issues where complaints came in. People showing me pictures and I'm like, oh gosh. Well, most of that, uh, most of that happens at home. Believe it or not, and some of you sleep with the dog, and you're looking at your tattoos, and, yeah, yeah. We, and all that stuff. Right, you have to get that out the as well. And you know, you we're looking for that. We can't, that we can't follow them home and take care right, of it. Absolutely. You know, so we do 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 our best to do the aftercare. Um, we use Aquifer for the aftercare. Um, that was agreed to with the town of Easton. Uh, we give a handout, and they sign it. Um, so it's it's one of those things that you know, if you if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. So I think after our discussion from everyone, I think it might be safe if you follow the Lakeville regs and move forward. Uh, and you guys can disagree with this. If you move forward and uh, get it up and going, you should be on solid ground. Do you <coughs> agree? I'm, I'm actually taking a little back now for you sir but i was asked this week to look into the regs and i and it was just a couple of days ago i looked into it and i said here's here's what it is and then just now i'm finding out it doesn't even exist or well we don't know that no, that's the thing so maybe it was almost like out of the left field here i am thinking it's yeah. just up to two days ago that it's it's still so i just i don't know i don't, I don't know why it was lack of communication so then, that within two days, it should have been like, oh, by the way, an email back saying, I don't even think this, so I can look as well. So we don't, look, if somebody doesn't come before us and say, do you even have regs? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm personally up for the, the highest regulations that you guys put forward because it makes I the shop better. I just thought we had it in place as well. Yeah. I, I think it's still in place, but. Yeah, we spent a lot of time trying to find them. I have two comments. I was part of that process back in the day, and I was surprised to find out the same. My concern is that we need to first verify, and you can do that through minutes of meetings to see what was approved. Absolutely. Just because someone tore something up and didn't implement it doesn't mean it isn't a regulation. Our minutes do show that, that it was approved. That's correct. Yeah. So if you start there, you'll find out whether the regulation exists or doesn't exist. And if it exists, it's the late bill model because I know Mr. Bernardo is one present. The second comment, and I've stayed out of these discussions because there's been some interest in my building, but there are other buildings. Yeah. Um, 
However, my partner couldn't be here tonight, so I will say this. I understand how government works all too well. The problem is, when you own a business like this, and I put my money where my mouth is, I took a building that was defunct, deplorable, and turned it into something. To say that someone has to wait two or three months for approval, um, it just can't happen. Because we get calls every day for space, and as a business owner, I need to rent space. I need to pay my bills. So um, I think there's a happy medium, but we need to have some dialogue first. You know, we can find out next week whether this reg is in, play, in effect or not. And two, if it isn't, then I would just ask the board to fast track it so that we can make sure that we build a space that conforms to all the regulations. You know, we have we have things that we want to see too as building owners. So we just want to find a balance between all yeah, of them. I, I I think we just gave him the opportunity to move forward uh, a moment ago. So initially the process probably would take that long. Uh, but I agree with uh, Mr. Tannis that if there's no regs, then you can go ahead and move forward. So Just, just move forward cautiously, knowing that if in the past, The only question I had, did we check with the uh, town clerk? Nothing? In the board of selection. We didn't check the minutes of the meetings. Kevin sent us the minutes there. Yeah, we have the minutes. Mm -hmm. And the regulation was adopted. So whether there's a regulation in place or not, he still has to file with the board to get a permit from the board, which would be at the next meeting. And if there's no regulations in place, they say the permit, you can't stop him from getting a permit. And if the regulations are in place, he's got to follow the regulations. So either way, it sounds like at the next meeting, he's getting his permit. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, for the record, I'm in favor of your business. Um, I think we I'm all just, are. Yeah, definitely. I have no, no objections with that. I just want them to have the tools to do their Tool. job. Absolutely. And there's no, for the next business coming in, everybody's up by the same playing field. That's all. Yep. I totally and agree. I and I personally worked on it, so if I went through that whole thing, you know, so it doesn't exist. Yeah. It's actually disappointing. So. Well, I did it right 14 years ago, and I want to do it right again. So. Yeah, I'm in favor. It's definitely. Yeah. If I can shoot for August 1st, that'd be awesome. But I mean, well, that should be. That should happen. When's our next meeting? July 10th, right? Something like that. Do you want to hold a meeting between now and then to start the process? Just make sure it's seven or ten days prior. Just do that. Just buy our guys done and then maybe go on it. And then July 8th, I think, is what we have to close for our July meeting. You could have the public hearing then. I appreciate it. Would that help even more? Yes. I just, I, I mean, like I said, you can move forward now and follow nothing because we have nothing and there's nothing for us to stop you, right? If you did move forward, if it looks like in the past, you know, we were going towards the Lakeville regs, I would suggest pulling up Lakeville and following those. Um, that way you're not surprised in the end, you know. Um, I just hate to see you put work into something and then. Yeah, but I yeah, would definitely start with that one okay. because if, if we come to find out, at least you're on the right. If they decide, if the board decides to go with the model one, but that one would entail adding, like making the decisions. So you could actually look at both if anybody has time to read both and plug in what you want to plug in on the model one. But at least you have that. Yeah, the model that actually it breaks it, it all down for you. You know, the, yeah. the space and what you need for the, the whole nine yards. It's just, like you said, the town might want to change something, and they can. They have, they have the, the ability to do that, you know? But you, you have a business. You've been doing it for a long time, so I don't, I don't think there's going to be any real issue. I have absolutely no, no issue with expediting this. 
uh, due to a snafu here. Nobody knows what's happened to this. So um, hopefully we can get you in next month and get it permitted. And I appreciate it. I know it's a lot of work, but I appreciate it. Okay. Anything else? No. Any questions? No. All set? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. I appreciate we'll be talking it. next month. Okay, moving on to Kevin, you gotta go? So, in like 10 minutes? Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on to 4B, the award, new discussion act, award town of Dighton trash bag contract. Do we have numbers? So, we put this out, our solicitation of quotes to four companies, and um, we only heard back from one company, which happens to be Mansfield Paper, which is a company we used in the past. Bids were due on May 20th or something like that. They gave us a price, and the price is only good till May 31st of 2021. So the price has already expired. So we reached out to him and said, hey, if we order these bags June 10th, what's the price? He can't get us a price. Apparently the price of raw materials have gone up like 25% since January 1st. So he's like, I can't give you a contract for the full year. So we're kind of, at the point now where basically we get the price from them, we can buy as many bags as we can buy and shove into the trailer at the DPW and, and go from there. But anything we order now, like on June 10th, it's, we're not gonna get it till the end of July. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to do because we're not gonna get a price that's gonna be good for 365 days. The price is gonna be good for 10 days. So. It's still a contract for fiscal year 2022 or whatever. We just happen to make one order and that's it, you know, and that's, and we talked to Mr. Ferry already and he said we can stack a few pallets somewhere and pull some equipment out to get us through at least the fall or whatever. Come winter time, he needs the inside space, but. Use that at first. Right. And that's where we're at right now. Well, I'm sure we'll get the funding, so that's not. Well, yeah, if we don't get the funding, then we get a different problem, but right, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because right now we're probably going to run out of bags the end of July. So, because we've been using a lot more bags last year than anticipated. And of course, when we did the budget for last year, we didn't say, hey, we need a lot more. We thought we were going to be able to, but the large bags went a lot faster. Small didn't go as fast as we expected. I'm thinking, how does this work out in a new fiscal year? Um, is this going to be an old bill going forward, or are we going to, or we can probably, uh, that sense. what's the word I'm looking for? It's an encumbrance. Encumbrance, so, yes. So where is the money now to pay for the bags? And it's in fiscal year 22, after town meeting votes at Monday night. So then it's gonna, how can you enter into contract this year for monies that haven't been appropriated yet? It's not legal. Yeah. Right. You can't do that. You have to wait till after. Right. Okay. After it's voted. Unless you have money in this fiscal year's budget, you cannot enter into contract for monies that have We don't. So, so, but if we wait till July 1st to order the bags, then we, we're going to run out of bags. So do you have any money this year? We have $13 year? left in the account. Sorry, that's okay. And uh, the money gets appropriated at July 1st, right? July, it's Ju June 7th for July 1st. Well, right now we have a contract with Mansfield Paper that is good through June 30th. We so just, we spent all the money we had. I'm sorry. So why can't we do a, res a reserve fund transfer to buy bags in this fiscal year to get us through into next fiscal year? That might be what we need to do. We didn't find out till this afternoon that. How much? How? Right. How much money say would be a month's worth of bags? Mm -hmm. Months worth. Well, uh, there's minimum order. I. Well, how much? How much was budgeted last year? I don't. 32,000 and change. So. <laughs> I got you. You got you? <laughs> you got it? <laughs> so the town say administrator is saying order whatever so we can. Say $3,000 $3, is going to get you equivalent equivalent of a month. There's a minimum, minimum order. order. What's the minimum? Like four pallets. What's four pallets? What's 280 cases. That's How much 12, is that? $12,000. $12, okay. So have you checked? There is money in the reserve fund. 
Oh, well, yeah, there's money in other places probably so, that we can pull. So, yeah. see, we're at a problem because you can't enter into a contract this fiscal year for money that hasn't been appropriated. You, you're going to run out of bags, but that's what the reserve fund is for. Thank you for clearing that up because yeah. we didn't want to make, make sure we didn't step into it. No. So you have to just enough to get us by, but obviously, and still not fall short. You have to figure out exactly what what we need, and then and go with that that number. Well, we, I guess we just the minimum would be plenty then twelve thousand dollars. It'll bring us into the fiscal year. Oh yeah. And what's That's the price differential between the new contract and the and the existing one? The new contract is nine dollars a case cheaper. So we're not saving any money by doing that. But it's already run out. May thirty first was the. No, oh they no, gave us for the new days. for that new price. But the contract for fiscal year twenty one technically is good through. June 30th. June 30th. But my guess is they probably they may or I don't know. And all the stores, no, they, no, they no. don't have, they didn't stockpile, they don't have enough? They well, enough bags right now? Yeah. We, we thought we did, and we usually do till like September, October. But this past year was a lot more bags we used than we anticipated. So look at the tonnage that went through the roof. Right. I mean, there's nothing, people were home more. Right. And honestly, we thought we were going to be okay, but it just then they keep. Usually, the numbers go up and there's a peak, and then they come back down. Well, they, they only came back down a little bit, and so right, should we have asked to transfer money earlier or whatever to do this? Maybe, but we're not. We weren't that far off. We're only like two weeks off of running out of bags. Do we get a sample from the new the new bidder? It's not a new bidder. It's the old bidder. Have they changed any of the specifications? Well, it's the same, same company. It's all the same. Can they give us four thousand samples? <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute. So you're saying the company that we currently use rebid at a lower number, so it's the same company. Okay. So and we have a contract with right now through June 30th. Yes. And when do you think we'll run out of bags? And I need you to be honest. It's right around July 31st. So June 30th. July 31st. July 31st. We'll run out of bags. We're gonna run out of bags. So why we can't we? They need a one month solid month. No, right? six to eight week lead time. So oh, there's that, chance you that was my next question. Expert. That was my next question. Well, you can place the order and say, I want it by July 1st. And when it nah. comes in, that's when you pay it. Well, he was just saying you, you can't do that. Do that. Pay, yeah. 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 That was what we thought we were going to do. Can't do and that. You can't place the order without the money to pay the contract. Mm -hmm. Or a pickle. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It, it takes that long for that lead time. <laughs> Every single time, it's been eight weeks. Yep. And now it might be longer because of shipping and fuel and getting raw materials. Who knows? So even if you order now on the reserve fund transfer, we're still risking running out of bags for a week or two. Yes. We're going to be close. Well, so what we usually do is we start rationing. So when Hannaford calls and says we want 10, we send them five. That kind of thing. And so we can, we can stretch it. The problem is our trash usage of the town has been going up faster than population growth. So it's been a it's it's been a problem. No, well, the, the, the other answer is just go as much as we can. Place the order. Oh, you can't because how are you going to tell you tell people yeah. to just use regular bags? No, we've got plenty of small bags. It's the large bags we're running out of. If you were out a week and people had to make do with with small bags for a week or two, I get it. But I mean, a month that's that's terrible. Yeah, they're going to... I think the reserve fund transfer is probably the best way to go. And when the quote came in and it said May 31st, I'm like, that's got to be a typo. Or is it May 31st of next year yeah. or something, right? Yeah. And so we emailed him back and just said, and it took him time to get back to us. And he's like, no, it's just we're having a real hard time. Actually, he said, because of the volatile pl plastic market, their supplier. He said, that's all we could... So he actually gave us like seven days. So I mean, we can go to the select and say we need to order bags, and they can yeah, figure talk out. Talk to pay Mike. For go talk to Mike Monday. Because they're the ones that have to do the contract. You know, I mean, they're the ones that are, are doing it. So. Yeah. And right, they'll know if they got fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars that they can move over, knowing that we're going to get it right back or whatever. It's only temporarily like pulled up forward, and then it's going to be pushed back because the bill's not going to come in till August. So I think we need another meeting like ASAP. So one, we have to deal with the, the body art. Two, we got to deal with the trash bags. Can you get another quote from them, another bid? He is Can't supposed to get like seven days. 
um, that I propose a, a meeting next Wednesday, the 9th. I don't care what time. The selectmen are also meeting on the 9th, so we can meet right before them. I mean, it's, it's two things. Yeah, but I'm saying we can meet right before them, even, and then we yeah, could vote, and then they could go right to their meeting. Long just after four thirty, I really don't care. I, 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 it won't be long, but if the if their bid is or their quotes only going to be good for seven days, and we're kind of in a, a, a real bad situation here, um, that's an awful lot then, of lead time. If we can figure out if we can get the reserve fund transfer for the amount to order the minimum. But if, or, or figure out where we can pull money from to cover that cost. We should be able to find that out Monday when he talks to the TA. Yeah, maybe. Or can, I can go talk. We've to been the in TA. conversation with the TA, and he's been texting me during the meeting. What the what's, what's the board doing? Because he's obviously in a little bit. Is there other money that you can? How do you, how do you from you other that? accounts? Sweep it over. Not sweep it over. I don't know how your accounts are set up. But do you have other accounts in that same? Yeah, we're we're actually number? putting one where we can just. You can uh, deficit spend one account if you have a <clears throat> surplus in the others. All the bottom line is right. in the positive. At the and end it all of depends year. on how your your budget is structured. Yeah, four thirty three there is is kind of a rough one. Yeah. And unfortunately, I have to. I have another meeting at seven, so I have to run out. So the problem we run into here is you'll see that the landfill recyclery is off the charts. Fourteen thousand dollars in the hole which we weren't expecting because everybody is cleaning out the houses and throwing away all their crap still. So we went way in the hole on that one. But you notice the total down the bottom right there, the estimated remaining balance based on projected numbers is only $2,000 left over in 433. So that doesn't help. Does this, just double checking, does this um, include what we're doing at the transfer station with the removing uh, Bulky ice pickup? Yes. Uh, well, I threw in an extra thousand dollars on the recyclery and fifteen hundred. Well, like thirty percent more on the the bulky. Still not twelve grand worth. So, so this is the time where we really work with Tom down there, cr crushing things down, making sure that we're not uh, sending things off, and then later on we overspend. But we can also hold a dumpster and not call for delivery until July 2nd. That's so. if we have to do that, but well, that's, that's this is where we did one that last one, year. Everyone has to be talking to each other because that's what happens. You get you get a bill and all of a sudden, oh, it was, it was June 20th. There it is, and you're over. I remember when I was on the on the board selecting you to go. In so at the end of May, we we're getting all these requests from different departments looking because they needed you know 500 bucks a year, thousand dollars there, and they were talking to the other departments and we were signing sheets that you know highway was giving police a thousand dollars, you know, collector's office was good, the assessors was giving the collector tra trader collector's office 250 dollars just to square everything away because the money was there so it was easy, it wasn't a refer reserve fund transfer one. Department happened to have a surplus because of whatever. Another department needed it. Boom, made that switch. Whatever the accountant does, that was it. I don't know if we still do that. Yeah, we That's still do my... it. We can still do that. But. So see if there's other departments that have a surplus by any chance that we could borrow from, steal from. I think you could only use it in that line, like 433. That's all you could use it in. So this, this ledger doesn't show the line for trash bags. Yeah, we have thirteen dollars. It's the very, it's the very no, last no, one. No, no, this is not a ledger from the accountant. This is a ledger from the accountant. Oh, oh. Um, this does not show the trash. Oh, it's bag the next account. page. Sorry, I, I don't have that. Um, I didn't. That's how I need to see how it's structured, so I can give you. Uh, is there anything that. else with the fifty-two eighty accounts, or is it just because this is fifty-two eighty-one? So there must be. Uh, I'm sorry, fifty-five eighty-one. So if there are other things with the 5580 accounts, we might be able to deficit spend. I don't know if you can deficit spend, what was it, 12 grand? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's tough for a minimum or that's, that's a hefty chunk of change. That's the, it's the next sheet, it only had the trash bags on it. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. So, so that's, so that's all they that's they want to suspend yep. our reserve so fund transfer or? I, mean, we, we I just summarized it on one sheet so I could do my own tally because I can't work with the PDF. Right. I think we should probably schedule that quick meeting. Yeah. Whatever. 
Yeah, it's by and by and it's like when we can kick our recommendation right to them and they can vote to do whatever they want to do. Yeah, I, I don't see an ability to deficit spend. No, I don't, I don't think right so now. either. Sorry, I don't see an ability to deficit spend. I mean, ultimately, with that great of an order, next year the trash bag line is going to be in a surplus. Yeah. So they just need to know that, hey, we don't have a choice because this is the minimum order. We really would only need, say, three or $4,000 to cover he sh he showed it to me on with room to spare. But because we can, you know, next year there could be up to an $8,000 or so surplus. So we'll be all in favor of June 9th. What time does selection start? Six. Dave Laura, do you know what time the selectmen start their meetings? Six o'clock. Six. Up to like five or something, I guess. We only really have those two items, right? Do you yeah. see anything else on the calendar? So, million dollar question. Yes. What do we do if we don't have bags for a one to ten day? Because right now, in my calculations, even if we ordered on the ninth, we could have a ten day gap between the 31st and when these bags come in when you sell the when you sell the small you give them well, two, like say, you give them we two? Start rationing too this place is yeah. order five or ten cases but if, at a time but if we've had it well that you can control but you can't control use right the consumers are using them the trash is up so if ultimately we have you know higher trash volume we could potentially have an issue where we don't have bags to put we trash We have in. smaller bags, plenty of small bags. I'll have to problem with selling. Because people have, you know, I mean, it's not like you're buying one bag at a time. I mean, I have a roll of 10 cent in my drawer at home. I actually have none. I have to buy some. There we go. I mean, that, you know, 10, 10 bags covers me, you know, over two months. So. And Tom will make a one, uh, what is it, one call? Uh, a reverse call and say, hey, this week, bags, uh, no bags red. this week, and you can just put it in any bag, we'll accept it, and code red. As a citizen of Dighton, no, a lot of people won't buy the small bags because they feel like it's, it's not going to do the job. Right. Yeah, so they're going to look at those small bags and say, no, I'll, I'll do something else. I'm not going to buy a small bag. And I think a majority of them will do that. You know, I'll be one of them, to be honest with you. Thanks, oh, Thanks I, Dave. I, yeah. I get it. I'm just... Hopefully that the stores have enough of a surplus and people have enough surplus at home that we can get by if there is a week period or a 10 day period. So does the Board of Health have the authority to issue a temporary reprieve on trash bag use if we actually do run out? I think we would have to. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good I guess we'll cross that yeah. when we get to it. Let's just place the order. One week trash holiday. Place the order and we can only, it'll be actually, everybody will be happy about it. They'll say, oh, they, they, they mess up our game, so. Not messed up, I shouldn't say that, but. I think we'll probably have a better idea come July 8th. Mr. So Chairman, I have to step out. I have another meeting. Thank you, that's fine. Thank you. So are we gonna make a motion to continue this to June 9th for a special meeting? Is that the? Yeah, I yeah I'll, I'll make the motion to continue the, the uh, trash bag. Uh, Second. Tra June 9th. Five, five o'clock. <coughs> Thank you. A motion made in the second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Yeah, that motion carries. We'll table to our next meeting June 9th. Hey, look at the next one. Use of FEC grant additional funds. Let's buy trash bags. Money, huh? <laughs> Number one, it's only like $1,400, right? Uh, I think one can dream. And it's specific things that it can be used for did you bring that up did I you give it to them um, so this is another grant we got from FEP if you remember way back last about a year ago we got it was supposed to be three waves but they only gave us like two and then CARES kicked in and took over well FEP gave us another grant and the money can be used for only very very specific things like contact tracings giving out vaccines um, that kind of thing Dighton unfortunately we're not doing the vaccine here so we can't use it for that so contact tracing is about the only thing we can use it for because Roz and I have been doing that 
So the money could be applied to that. I don't see if anything else that was on there that we could use it for. So we have to spend it by June 30th. So I, I don't know what else to do with it. I ran into some issues to spend mine and I asked, because the vaccine one was very vague, I said, what if I ordered two computers, two laptops? And she goes, you need a laptop to do contact tracing to get online and to submit the IS databases. So she goes, if you need a laptop, you need a laptop. That's covered. Just saying. That's how we get the computer on one of them, right? The one you over. Just, yeah, you just have to pay anything to submit for reimbursement or whatever, unless the town has a contract already with somebody. But. So she, I forget her name. Dixon Data Management is in there, monitoring of travelers, risk communication, support public messaging. Yeah, so I, the computer fell into the data management. Do we need a laptop? She, I mean, I even, I said, like I, I bought a um, handful of like small folding tables and she, well, if you needed to set up a vaccine clinic, which we did, I mean, we were outside back in February at drive through in March, I needed tables. So, I mean, obviously that happened before this, but all that got covered, I used them at town meetings. Instead. So, just have to use your imagination. Well, we actually have $4,017, so. There you go. How about a drive through window for bulky item stickers? I like that. <laughs> I, think, I think that definitely. <laughs> What's the bill? A vending machine to give out uh, <laughs> Bend trash bag vending machine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we need another laptop. I mean, maybe we do, but I don't know. But even the laptop's not four thousand dollars, so. So we can. And what happens? We don't spend it. We lose it, right? Yeah. I mean, you could have. Used, I mean, you could use it for PPE type stuff, but I mean. Well, don't get me wrong, the $4,000 for our contact tracing, because it's all overtime, it's not a problem for right. us. As long users. as it's documented overtime, you can't use it as part of your straight time. Right. And that's part of the problem between CARES and FEMA and all that, because I get straight time from 28 to 35 hours, so it's only above that that this would pay for it. So. Good up. But yeah, unless somebody comes up with something else, I, I... Our nurse has been doing contact tracing again, right? She's been doing some of it, only on the unique cases that we can't handle, but she also consults with us every morning as we go over our problems with her and she gives us answers. So that would co co possibly fall under the surveillance and case identification, including but not limited to public health, epidemiological investigation activities such as contact follow-up. So what she's doing is giving us the information to go back to the people with. So I think it would fall under that, so. Okay. And this so, money is from January 14th to June 30th. So it's not a problem for us to spend 4,000 on contact tracing during that time. So it can be, because we didn't get the money until April, it can be anything that was spent prior to that January. So if you need to apply it to something then Let's say if we can't come up with something else, there's that. So, but we just want everybody to know we got another grant. So, um, I, I don't know all the logistics of, of that grant parameters. Um, cabinets for PPE, you both know, no, wouldn't work. Yep, you can use it for Think that. Think so? Yep. Absolutely. Oh, because you needed it for vaccine, but we didn't do vaccine. Doesn't matter. Include. Oh, okay. So here's the reason. We bought cabinets um, from Home Depot uh, with emergency preparedness funds, if I'm not mistaken. The cabinets came in severely damaged. So much so that, I mean, we can use them, but they're awful. My discussions with the manager, I think, will lead to a refund eventually. Um, but at this point, with the dialogue I'm having him, I'm not, I'm not taking new cabinets from him. I'm only taking a refund. So we need new cabinets, and Home Depot is not going to supply them. We, I would go to another vendor for them. So once we get the refund, it's probably going to go back to the general fund. So we need cabinets anyway. 
Uh, so, you know, the taxpayer isn't losing any money. We're going to get the money back, and we could use these funds to order new PPE cabinets. I think that might be a, a why, because they, they, they weren't cheap. They were, they were pricey. They even said I could use it to buy a desk if I needed it. Oh, no, and that's fine. I guess it was a matter of because we weren't doing the vaccine, and that's why. But uh, technically, all the supplies we had for the vaccines that never happened, we have to keep them somewhere. Right. And, and they need to be boxes under, sitting on the floor. And they need to be on the locking key. Right. So, that, so that, might be a, that might be a good way to do it, and we could probably you know, use quite a bit of it. Is that a motion by the board? Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, purchase cabinets uh, for PPE. And I'm going to extend that and say if there's any additional PPE, I don't know what the future is going to bring. But, um, you know, when COVID first hit, I had a very, very small amount of PPE that was left over from H1N1. Without that, the first two months of COVID, COVID would have been a disaster. So I know I don't want to be a hoarder. However, I think it's important to have some form of decent stock and supply of hand sanitizer, masks, things like that. So if you get the cabinets and there's still money left and you have room left in the cabinets, I would like to extend that cabinets and any additional PPE that you feel should be on hand. So one of the things we've done is we got an intern doing an, an inventory and some of the stuff like the gloves, they have an expiration date. And what we were gonna do is just rotate those into the fire department and just keep the, keep the same number on hand, but they're always yep. good enough. So that was our goal. But again, without the place to keep it, without the intern, without the money to buy it, it was, but so we're, we're getting to where we need to be to be prepared, so. It's a long motion. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So the motion is, if I, I got it correct here, we're going to buy the necessary cabinets for the storage of PPE, and if any funds are left, we will buy additional PPE for future use. Mm -hmm. And I'll step down in a second. I think we've d beat this to death with discussion. Thank All you. in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll go buy that one. Uh, moving on to 4D, the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day. Um, fall of 2021 is not going to happen uh, because the $10,000 we were putting aside for the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day was cut by the FinCom. And I'm probably going to try to get it on again in the fall meeting and for a spring event, hopefully. So that's where we're at with that one. It's too bad. No, I know. For uh, E, review, discuss, and act book collection bin. I guess we've had a few people interested in putting some bins out. Okay. Uh, areas of town or one somewhere. Station and then one somewhere else in town, whether that be Town Hall, Library, DPW, they, they were open to any kind of suggestion. During COVID, we did have many people call asking where they could donate books, and of course, we referred them to the library. But the library doesn't have the capacity or capability of taking any more books. So people don't want to throw them out. There, there used to be a book bin at the school. It is no longer there. We used to have one here at Town Hall. It's my suggestion, because these types of bins seem to collect trash yes. in, on, and around them. They're an eyesore. Then what happens is they don't be continuously maintained. They are forgotten about, and it becomes a nightmare to deal with. Um, If we were to put one, I'd probably say in the transfer station. That way, at least it's not open to regular traffic so someone can dump a TV and match that night. Right. It's yeah. being watched. There's still an option for people to come and use it. Um, you know, when the transfer station's open, 
That would be my suggestion. I've seen too many of these types of bin collection bins. You know, starts off as a great idea. The five years later, the two years later, whatever it is, the the, the company goes bankrupt. That bin just sits there, and collects trash. We could start with one of the transfer stations. And I would, I would definitely request a key, so that way if that happens, at least we have well, a key. Well, I think that was one access. of the things on their thing. Is it is on there, yeah. So, yeah. so I, would, I would say, you know, start one if put it at the transfer station and request a key. So yes. the only thing I'll add to it is I, I believe the Board of Selectmen have, if, if this board was to vote in the affirmative, I believe the Board of Selectmen has to finally approve it simply because uh, we wouldn't be, the town and the town's vendors wouldn't be collecting the books. It's actually someone from the outside. Right. There's no contract with the town, nothing to do with the town. So I think that the Board of Selectmen would have to just ratify your vote um, and allow it to go at the transfer station. All right, so now I'll, I'll make a motion. Sorry. Did you to have recommend to the Board of Selectmen one. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just make a motion and ask if you want anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm good with one or even two up there. That is the big problem is the trash ends up getting out there. Mm. I think at the transfer station, the trash, the, the attendant will have control over what goes in there, so. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's a great idea. I mean, for them, to me, that's also a, a better location if I had a bin, because now it's monitored, you know, as far as any vandalism. So I'll make a motion that we send a recommendation to approve a, uh, a one of these book bins at the transfer station with their approval. Step down to second a motion. So the motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries. Um, moving on to 4F, we were going to have a discussion. Hopefully all three of us would be here on what our vision is on a five-year plan moving forward. But I personally would prefer to wait till all three of us are here. Yeah, I think so. So if there's a motion to table that one. Make a motion to table uh, 4F. 4F. I'll step down a second a motion to table 4F. If I can just, oh, go ahead, finish. No, that's okay. I was gonna say, I just wanna say that three years ago we did a five-year plan. Um, at the, the town administrator said, hey, I want everybody to do a five-year plan. So we're three years into it, so it's a good time to reassess your five years and look and continue to look ahead. So that's why it's on the agenda tonight. So. Okay. Um, we're going to add this to our next meeting and discuss whether it's going to be three or five. So all those in favor? Table Aye. Aye. Oh, I already said the motion carries once. Isn't it? <laughs> July 8th. Okay, moving on to 4G, we will discuss an act, summer meeting, and executive session dates, schedule, et cetera. So right now our current schedule is set for the second um, to Thursday of each month. So right now it's July 8th and August 12th. You all have calendars in front of you. And we've obviously just scheduled a meeting for June 9th. We had also kicked around the idea of doing a workshop for the Title V uh, the septic regulation changes. Obviously, we got to deal with body art regulation changes, but we were going to do that at the next meeting. But so what are the dates in July and August? July 8th and August 12th. Those are the, the current meeting schedule. And now June 9th. Because we're going to run an ad in the paper and say body art regs. Do we say and revise septic regs too and put it all in one ad, or does that have to be two separate I don't ads? think the body art regs even has to go to the paper. It just has to be posted like a regular meeting that we're having a hearing. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. Because it breaks. You can if you want to, but I don't think you have to. Mm. Well, that would be up to the board and whether you want to or not. But. I always do just because I think it's a good practice, a little more open about it. But, um, although there's plenty of time, so yeah, it wouldn't matter. I don't have to do it. For what? The body up? But I'm saying if we do one, if we do an ad in the paper and we're doing right. it for body up, do we say and revising the septic regs and put it all in one ad to save money and effort and do it all at one meeting? Or? So they would have to be approved and ready to go to a hearing because you'd, you either have to print the whole regulation or changes to the okay. regulation in the paper or say 
a full copy of the regulation or full copy of the changes to the regulation are available. So July 8th, we would just be discussing the regulations, and if we decide to move forward with them, obviously with the input of a possible... Um, and I believe the Title V, you have to notify... I believe you have to like notify the septic installers and engineers and things like that. Right. It's a little more. It's just like there's there's a couple weird ones. Wells are another one that has to be <clears throat> more publicized. Title Five is one, but body art's not. It's mm -hmm. just a. And we haven't even had a workshop yet to discuss the regulations. I think it's too far away. Yeah. yeah no, it was just it was a thought. It was a matter yeah, of. Yeah. No. No. Because if we can't do body art on July eighth, and we're going to be doing it on August twelfth for the official notification and we can do the workshop ahead of time then august 12th we could it would be the night to do them both is what i was getting at we'll have to get pizza or something <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's the verdict for the workshop oh no we didn't come up with any dates yet oh, right. so uh, i'd see when kevin's available for that too yeah i mean obviously we could add this one to july 9th so everybody can have the calendars and pick it out i mean the problem is we're running into the end of June and July get to be very high. I think at least our regular meetings, I think July 8th and August 12th should be fine. And then we can go from there. Yeah, we always have one if necessary anyway, if something. Yeah, who knows with mosquitoes this year. Mm. You know, that's going to turn out, so we may have some. I hope we have a year like last year. Plymouth County didn't. Hmm? Plymouth County had a bad year last year. Did I don't they? know why they stayed out of Bristol, but... Take it. Okay, so we can let's get a motion to accept those dates as the summer okay. meeting schedule. Did we come with an executive? We can do that on a regular meeting night too. Prior to or after. Okay. Let's make a motion that uh, we have our regular meeting, regular board of health meeting July eighth and August twelfth. Uh I'll step down and second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? That's no change from our normal our normal stuff, right? Right. So we don't get a summer? <laughs> no. no. We're not meeting this summer. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no time off for the board out. Didn't get last summer off either, so. Okay. Inspector's report. Oh, any public input? No, but what about Dave? the executive session? Oh. What do we decide on that? We'll, we'll put it on a meeting night. Probably two. Either the 8th or the... Oh, okay. Probably uh, the 8th would be the best. Uh, no public input, inspectors' reports, health agent. Uh, we've already talked about COVID. We already talked about the money in the budget. Um, Park tests are starting to come in. We're getting a lot of these empty lots that have been hanging around for a while that people are starting to submit per caps for. We're also getting an awful lot of irrigation well applications coming through. So, um, but other than that, bulky item pickup week is next week. So we've been selling a lot of stickers uh, last week, the week before. It's just, it's a lot of stickers. Uh, about half of what we did last year, though. Last year was very busy because, of course, everybody was, was home at the beginning of COVID. So it's about half of last year. Um, but it's still a lot of stuff. So, But we use the message boards by DPW. They now have two of them. Um, and that seems to be the same thing as when we put out stuff for the vaccine or household hazardous waste day. They seem to be a very good net to catch people with. So um, that's going pretty well. June, July are a lot of vacation time in here, so hopefully that we can use the time that we got because it's kind of hard to take the time, but we're trying to figure it out. So life goes on. About something you mentioned about a lot of irrigation wells. Do you know of any towns, Matt, that have restrictions on irrigation wells anywhere? Because that's the same thing as that have the water uses. You know. You know, requirements, things you have to do to have one, but no, no restrictions. No limitations or restrictions. Not as far as being able to have one at all. The only thing I would like is, I think, because you can't use the water, 
if they, we had a sign, like a certain size sign that people had to display on the house or whatever in the yard or whatever. So people driving by know that you're on a well when you're watering your lawn. So now, what, does the water districts require that? Because I know some towns, the water district requires that. So that way they know, because usually they're the ones that wind up handing out the fines. I don't no. think so. I'm not aware of it, no. The only thing, oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, I was going to oh, ask it, you. It, the only part. thing I would add to that is that um, w if you're seeing an uptick in requests for irrigation wells, just have our two departments discuss it because uh, if there are any cross connections, uh, then we need to discuss whether it's potable water or not. If it's not going to be tested, the water is not going to be tested, then there can't be any, uh, you know, cross connections or spigots. It needs to be a closed system. Um, so. That, that's my only comment. The report, please. Do you have a report for the board? Nothing to report, sir. Okay, great, thank you. No animal inspector. Uh, I was not present at the minute, the meeting of May 6th. So we can probably catch that next meeting. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Step down the second motion to adjourn. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, Cable.